Hallelujah. to be praised. I want to first of all thank Brother Patel for the gathering of prayer this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
a little embarrassed that I actually moved to a second half. <laughs> you don't play around the golf with me this year, word don't get out that you're going to me. <laughs> so, at some point, I expect to see you on the <laughs> It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 First Corinthians 3, verse 10. The next uh, Corinthians is actually verses 10 through 17. And if I preach all seven verses of this next Corinthians today, it would really eat up your three day weekend. So I'm going to try to work through this one verse this morning. Verse 10. Read from the New American, excuse me, English Standard Version. You'll find these words recorded. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I lay the foundation. And someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. God, we thank you so much for the great and awesome privilege it is to stand behind this sacred desk. God, to carry the precious cargo of Calvary. And then, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to hear you speak. Yeah, Lord. Give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to comprehend. Let he or she who has ear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And now God, I pray that you would let me down in your well of wisdom, bring up a little power and demonstration, Lord, to the end that some might be strengthened, some might be renewed, but ultimately that someone will come around and cry out, what must I do to be saved? It's in that mighty and matchless name of Jesus, of our Christ, and every heart said, Amen. Amen. Again, this weekend we pause to and remember, and remember those who have fallen in service to our country. We also carry that over and remember our loved ones who have passed. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about something else I think is critical, especially at this juncture in our time that we remember. And so for just a few moments, I'm going to tag this text. Remember the foundation. Amen. Remember Amen. the foundation. Alan Weisman said, once we built structures entirely from the most durable substances we knew, granite rock, for instance, he said the results are still around today to admire, but we often don't emulate them because quarrying, Cutting, transporting, and fitting stone require patience we no longer possess. It's amazing how we all want it right now. Amen. It's amazing how we often look at the duck on the water, marvel at the gracefulness of the duck on the water, but oh, we can look under the surface. And see all the activity that's taking place to keep the duck afloat. Yes. Paul again is talking to this church at Corinth who has elevated personalities and people to the place of godlike status. Paul is talking to this church about the fact that when Christ comes into our lives, that we have a different insight Amen. than worldly people. Amen. We value godly wisdom over worldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. We realize that worldly wisdom does have a place. But it does not supersede godly wisdom. Amen. Paul says that I really wanted to help this church go to another level. Mm -hmm. He said that when I came to you I had to start over again. Instead of preparing solid food, I had to get some similar. Mm -hmm. 
and some nerve because you still are under the God. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul says to us on last week that Paul, Apollos, Peter, he said, we're simply tools uh -huh. Uh -huh. in the Lord's hand. And I really think that the church would be a different place if we understood the importance of embracing servanthood and not pursuing celebrity in God's church. Amen. I, I, really, I really believe the church would be more effective if we cared more about God's reputation than we did our own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I really believe that uh, the church would be more powerful, made a great impact in the world if we understood that only one man could fit on that cross. Paul today says to this church, I am a tool in the Lord's hand. Paul says to the church that Paulus and I were simply co-laborers. We were teammates. We were working cooperatively, cooperatively together. We were not competing against one another. Amen. Amen. All the harmony that comes about from the music stand as the different voices harmonize Amen. to sing one song. Amen. The lyrics are often different Sunday in and Sunday out. But the aim is the same, to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. That's why we call them Zion songs. Because they all point to one place. The Lord our God reigning and ruling in our hearts and in our minds. Amen. Paul says that you are God's field. You are God's building. He said, I, I, I watered. He said, I planted a promise of water that God gave the increase. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important that we understand that we all have roles in the kingdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. But God is responsible for the results in the kingdom. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Two things I want to talk about as we talk about remembering the foundation. First, we're going to talk about the faith. All right. Paul says that according to the grace of God given to me, Queen, I believe that our view of service impacts how we do service. I believe in my heart that when we realize that whether you are standing behind the sacred desk, whether you are playing the organ, on percussion, on a piano, whether you are ushering, whether you're a deacon, a Sunday school teacher, or better yet, let me say it again, as a psalmist, that I'd rather be a doorkeeper mm. in the house of the Lord. In other words, there are no menial tasks Amen. in the kingdom of God. They're all significant. They all have value because they all are designed for one thing, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus. They all point to one thing, a life that was sacrificed for our sins, a life that paid our sin debt, a life that freed us and delivered us from the power of sin and death. So Paul says to us that according to the grace that was given to me, Paul viewed his skill set as a church planter as a divine enablement. Paul didn't walk around bragging about his gifts. He walked around giving thanks for his gifts. DSD renders this Greek phrase as a preposition according to but I like the way today's English version translates it. It says, it provides a clear understanding by stating it this way, using the gift that God gave me. That's the whole sermon right there. Yeah. Don't, don't, I, I said this to you last week. Don't ever allow anyone else or yourself to minimalize the gift that God has given you. Yes, Lord. Paul understands that his involvement in the kingdom of God is a result of God's favor. Mm -hmm. you, you missed that. Mm -hmm. Our involvement in the kingdom of God is the result of God's favor. Amen. What that says to me is that God can use any 
anybody he chooses. And the fact that he chooses to use us, we ought to be grateful about. Here it is. Uh, according to the grace of God, means that God in his kindness gave Paul a special gift to enable him to found churches in non-Christian cities. Grace does not refer to one specific gift. But to all the gifts that Paul had received for the work of church planting, and particularly the congregation in Corinth. Grace refers to the skill, the ability, the capacity, or God's enabling power. According to the grace that was given to me, has the same force as the grace God gave the increase. So when we view our gifts, when we view our abilities as gifts, it will prevent us from acting like God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think I need to say that again. Come on. When we view our abilities as gifts, mm -hmm. it will prevent us from acting like God. Isn't that something? That God would impregnate a virgin. That God would uh, send forth his son, born of a virgin. That Christ would come and incarnate, make in flesh, live a life of holiness and obedience, suffer at the hands of man, die a criminal death for my sins and for yours, be buried in the grave. And get up after three days, and you think that the church don't stop because of you. We ought to come running to the church. We ought to get up after bed in the morning, excited, saying, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. There are some places that we don't want to go.
Sunday school teachers and people who have to uh, preach and teach or serve in the church. They say, can you give me any advice on how to serve God effectively and well? I said, real simple. Work at whatever the gift is that God gave you. Mm -hmm. Work like it all depends on you. Mm -hmm. Then pray mm -hmm. like it all depends on him. Mm -hmm. And then trust him. You missed that. Uh -huh. Then trust him. You are to give God the very best that you have. And understand that even your best is only given through the providential design of God. Yes. Yes, sir. Since our ability to serve comes from God, we should serve joyfully. Yes, Nobody should be walking around the church in a position of service, mm -hmm. upset, mm -hmm. angry. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to wake you up this morning. That, 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 that passage in Psalm touches me so deep. I'd rather be a doorkeeper mm -hmm. in the house of the Lord than spend 10,000 days in the tent of the wicked. Naturally, when we see somebody standing on the door, we think that that is a position of inferiority. <laughs> it's not the position in the church, no. it's where you stand. It's not where you stand physically. It's where you stand in relationship. And the real question is, do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him for yourself? Do you know him in the pardon of your sin? Do you have access to the throne of God? Hebrews up 12, 16, speaks of how Esau didn't value the favor of God. Having a moment of desire, he traded away his birthright for a bowl of soup. You know the story. Everybody talks about Jacob and his mother and how they tricked him. Well, can I tell you something? Satan is still playing tricks. The question is, do you value what the Lord has given you? The question is, is your gift for sale to the highest bidder, or has your gift been engaged in the service of God? That, that's the real question. When we think about there is no price tag that you can place on salvation. There is no price tag that you can place on serving the Lord. Dean Ferrara was a personal friend of uh, Queen Victoria. He, 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 he talked about the anniversary service of the accession of Edward VII to the throne in England. He said during the service in the Canterbury Cathedral that the Queen, after hearing one of the chapters talk about the second coming of Christ, she said, I wish that the Lord come. <laughs> in my lifetime. Her dear friend said, why are you so adamant and so moved? She said, oh, how I would love to lay my crown in his feet. There are some of us who reach the place in life where we realize that no life has not been a crystal stair. No, man. But the Lord has been good. His mercy is everlasting. His true love endure to all generations. Is anybody here other than me when you look back over your life? Yes, there have been some bad days, but all of your good days outweigh your bad days. And the truth of the matter is that you can't complain. Somebody asked me the other day, said, How you doing? I said, If I start complaining, I'd be lying. 
of marriage. And everybody who knew me prior to that know that's the real Can't nobody keep it like the Lord can. Might be a little bit different 
if you just came in and turned on the light. Mm -hmm. I, I believe. I believe with all. Yes. I, I believe some of those family relationships would be a little bit different. Mm. If you didn't feel like you had just as much right to cut them down as they do you. Mm. I, I believe that if someone evidences the fruit of the Spirit, the characteristics of Christ in you, and they saw an otherworldly being, as opposed to another worldly being in which they're doing warfare with, it might cause them to stop and pump. They got something that I don't have, and I wonder what it is. Paul, Paul says, like a steel master builder, I laid a foundation. In other words, Paul says. Because of how good God has been in me. The assignment that God gave me in Corinth was to lay the foundation of Christian witness. I don't care what your assignment is, Monday through Friday. Wherever God has called you to be, spiritually and vocationally, the number one priority is that you lay the foundation of a Christian witness. Somebody needs to see Jesus. Somebody needs to encounter an otherworldly being instead of the creatures of this culture that only care about getting, obtaining. And complete. People need to see somebody who's actually at peace where they are. Not always trying to get to the next. Somebody 
This word wise in English is the Greek word sophos. And it means one who is skilled in the art. You ever wonder why when you go to the museum, they say don't touch? You ever wonder why when you go to the museum, they say look, but don't touch? Because the oils and chemicals in our skin can affect the composition and the oils and materials that we use to compose some of these great masterpieces. Paul says, but as Christians, God allows us to touch the art. He trusts us to care for the portrait of Jesus. He simply says to us, Preserve it and practice it. Don't add nothing to it. See, in your mind, you think, well, maybe if we put it at a different angle, no, 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 no. The cross speaks for itself. It tells a story, though, that some of us don't want to hear. It, it tells a story. That he died mm -hmm. in our place. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't want to deal with that. Because we live in a postmodern world that says all truth is relative. Mm -hmm. We live in a world that says, do you, and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. We live in a world that says, that's what it means to you, and this is what it means to me. But when we come to the foot of the cross, we realize that we had a need that we could not meet ourselves. We realize that the God that we serve loves us so much yes. that we couldn't come where he was, so he came where we are. Yes. Real Christians who have been watching Right? 
Every one of us. I feel inside today. Here's the question. What are you feeling today? Doing to the church at all. Remember the foundation. The foundational doctrinal teachings of our faith. Christ crucified. Paul said the best in Philippians 2. Let his mind be you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Who though he was God.
that our lights are shining, God. Yeah, Lord. That we would give your name glory. Yeah, Lord. It's in your name and for your sake that we pray. And every heart said, Amen. 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 Him be glory, majesty and honor. 